Hi, Best Buds. It's Kathy with Kathy's Garden, and I'm so happy that you've joined me today. Today is hashtag Tag Me Tuesday, and we're going to make some vintage clusters for our junk journals. But first, let's have our shout out to W, Alyssa, Janie, Trudy, Nancy, N, Betty, and Barbara. I appreciate each and every one of you. All right, you guys, let's get some prep going on here. So I have an assortment of buttons. I have my thread to put inside my buttons. I have my scrap lace. I have my E6000, my tacky glue, my Tombow glue, my school glue. I have a toothpick for my Tombow. I have some images that I have prepped here. I have some coffee dyed paper and I have some circle punches. I have my vintage oxide photo and I have my tear ruler. Now what I first want to do is bring in my inch and a half punch. And if you don't have an inch and a half punch, if you have a square punch, you can use that. If you don't have any punches at all, all you have to do is get your scissors and cut yourself out something similar to an inch and a half square or inch and a half circle, something like that. Punch yourself out some on some cardstock because this is going to be our base. All right, so then once you have it punched out, what you want to do is you want to get your ink and you want to just ink all the way around the edge. Next, what you want to do is find yourself some images. You can get them even out of magazines if you don't have something like this. Now, my images that I've prepped are square and I have one here that's rectangle or you can even tear around that. So we don't want to fussy cut these out. I'm just going to show you quickly here how I would address this if I use this. Or we could actually use this. So let's just tear around the image. I'm not, I don't want that line. I don't want anything that's like structured. That's the word. I don't want anything structured. You can tear something out just like that. That will work perfectly. So let's go ahead and ink this up just like this. And then we want to bring in some of our scrap coffee dyed papers. And we want to just tear some shapes. Now you can do squares, you could do rectangles. You can do a circle if you want. Uh, I haven't done a circle in these, but you just want little pieces of scrap. You don't want them too big. These clusters aren't too awfully big. They're kind of on the medium side. So let's just get that done. And then let's go ahead and ink these up quickly. I only have one here and I might need more than one, I'm not sure. So I'm just going to quickly, quickly, quickly ink this up. Okay, now we want to start with our base. And so we're going to bring all of this in. And let's start with our base. This is our base. We're going to bring in, I'm using tacky glue, something that's going to be able to stick your pieces of lace down. So I am going to just generously, I'm waiting for the silly glue, generously to, I'm going to generously apply glue on my circle. That's what I'm trying to say. And I am going to lay this sideways so maybe it will be ready when I'm ready for it. And I'm going to grab some lace. Now, I am going to take this and I am just going to Let's see here, I cut those little ends off. I'm going to round the corners just a little bit. So I'm just using my scrap lace and I'm going to actually just put this right on here, just like that. I didn't cover the whole thing. I just placed it around the edge. I'm going to bring in a different kind of lace and a different color. I'm going to just take off the points here I'm going to tuck it down just a little bit. So I have just a shape. And I'm just going to lay that maybe a little like this. So it's actually, we're kind of like collaging with our laces. 
that's that's what it feels like to me. It feels like we're collaging with lace. Now, I have some eyelash yarn here that I think would be very pretty if I place that. I'm just going to put a glob and a glob of glue down, and I'm going to use my toothpick, and I'm going to stick the end of this right on that glob. I'm going to stick the other end on the other glob that I made. There we go, something like that. Okay, now let's see here. I think what's ready for our image, or maybe we want a little bit of color. Let's see, there's a gray. There's a little bit of a gray here. I think I'd like to use that because we can use this image that we tore out earlier when I was explaining how you want to get your images ready. And it's always, it always makes your project go faster if you prep. So, see, I've got all my buttons. Now, if I was going to really, really prep, I would have already put my, my string, my twine inside my buttons. I haven't gone that far. <laughs> but I have prepped a little bit. But if you completely prep, then this little assembly line would go so quickly. Now I'm just going to push this off to the bottom like this and just push it down so it gets all stuck where I need it to be stuck. So I'm going to pick this up so you can see how it looks so far. There's a little image that we we tore out earlier. Now let's select a button. How about if we put a blue button on here? That's awful pretty. Let's get a heavier piece of lace, maybe. I think it needs a little something heavier. Let's see. Maybe white. I'm not sure. I'm looking for another piece of maybe a different style. I don't know if I have a different style. This is the same as that. It's a little bigger piece though. Let's see what I like here. That will be fine. Just just on the side there. Just going to kind of pull it apart a little bit so it doesn't look perfect. We don't want this to be perfect. It's vintage. And so just with that said and the look that you're going to get with these clusters, it's not really a perfect look. All right, so now I'm going to push that down with my toothpick a little bit. I don't want to cover my image up too much. I like that image. Okay, there's a glob of glue right there. That might be right where I'm going to stick my button, but the glue will dry clear anyway, and it doesn't really matter. So I'm going to give myself a nice amount of twine, string, yarn, Whatever you choose to use, whatever will fit through your holes of your button. And this just finishes off your button so nicely. I hope I did that right. Nope, see, I knew that I didn't do that right. <laughs> Pay attention, Kathy. I'll have to wet that end of that to get that in there. There we go. See, it would make it go so much faster if you're sitting down watching TV or something and you just uh, make these. <laughs> it just goes so much faster. Sometimes when I'm in the car line, rider line, waiting to pick up my granddaughter, I will take these and I will just put strings in my buttons as I'm waiting. And so I can get that done because this is really the most fiddly part of the whole project. Okay, we've got our adorable little bow now. I'm just pulling it down to the size I want. Okay, now I'm going to get my E6000. The reason why I use this is because I seem to, I really want to have my buttons stay on, and sometimes glue doesn't hold them unless you get it to go through those holes. If you get your glue to go through those holes, pretty much you'll have it taken care of. I think I want it down here now that I look at it. I think I want it right there. I'm just going to push it down. 
the button with my end of my toothpick and I'm going to lay this over here so it doesn't get stuck anywhere. I'm going to take my white school glue and I'm going to put that right over the knot. The knot will come undone if you don't tell it not to. So we're telling it not to. Don't come undone. It will dry clear. You won't see that anymore. Isn't that beautiful? Absolutely beautiful. I have a couple more here that I made earlier. Oh my goodness, you guys. I hope you've enjoyed this video. If you have, please give me a thumbs up. I invite you to subscribe to my channel and I'll see you in my next video. See you there, guys. Bye now.